All right, let's get a couple of Cowboys from that team and have them up here. So we're going to spend the next hour with these two Cowboy greats. First of all, please welcome to the stage a five-time Pro Bowler, college football Hall of Famer. He was known as Troy's security blanket, one of the great tight ends in Cowboys history, Jay Novacek. Going. <laughs> Hi, Jay. That's Dan. Right, buddy. You, you may him. not recognize him. It's <laughs> <laughs> him. And also joining us tonight is a guy that, of course, everybody knows. You knew him very well from his playing days. He's been a member of the ticket team for about the last 15 years. He's joined us throughout each football season talking about the Cowboys and the NFL. And, of course, he's a member of the Fox A team, so he's in your living room every Sunday the Dallas Cowboys Pro Football Hall of Famer, Ring of Honor member, one of the greatest Cowboys ever, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, Troy Aikman. <laughs> Troy, how you doing, buddy? Welcome. How are you? Good to see you. Troy? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. What's up, brother? Hi, right, buddy. <laughs> Sir, that's, that's uh -oh, Dan. Corby. How are you? <laughs> so, how you doing, man? Good see. Here. So yeah, it was quite a time. <laughs> yeah, quite a time for the ticket. Twenty-five years ago, <clears throat> the Cowboys. The day before we went on the air, had just won the NFC Championship game, heading now to Atlanta to play the Bills for a second straight year in the Super Bowl. So. The ticket's going out to Atlanta, and we think we're going to knock it out of the park with great radio from the Super Bowl that week. And Assuming we could get on the air. Yeah, assuming we could do that. <laughs> and it was quite chaotic. As, as you guys were going out there for a second straight meeting with the Bills, and your coach had just guaranteed a victory, were you guys thinking, yeah, we'll take care of these guys again? What, what was the mindset playing them again? Uh, well, for me... Um you know, I I was knocked out of the game before. You know, I spent the night following our championship game in the hospital, and that was the year they didn't have the bye week. So, uh, I my week started off a little bit rough. That I got uh, discharged from the hospital about 7 a.m. on Monday morning. Our flight was at 8 a, 8 a.m. to go to Atlanta. I had wow. just enough time to kind of throw some things in a suitcase and and head off that way. And uh, we got through the week. And I will say that the week ended, we won the Super Bowl, I'm back in Dallas, a guy came up to me who I knew from the organization, and he said, hey, he says, were you feeling okay the week of the Super Bowl? And I said, yeah, I felt, felt fine. You know, he says, uh, do you remember when the buses pulled up, and you got off the bus, and you came, we were staying across the street from a, from a mall, and he says, do you remember when you came running up to me and said, hey, I haven't been to a mall in years. How about we go over there and go to the mall? And I said, you're pulling my leg. And he said, no, 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 that's what you did. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe I wasn't, you know, quite, wow. quite all together there during that week as it was. But my concern going into that game once again with the Bills was that they had already been in three Super Bowls. Of course, we had beaten them the year before in their third. And, and, and I'm just saying they can't possibly lose four in a row, you know, and how are we going to keep this from happening? And that was... That was really my biggest fear going into that game, just thinking just the odds of them losing four in a row, you know, aren't very good. Mm -hmm. What would you think, Jay? Did you think you had those dudes, or do you think it was going to be tough? You know, I, I thought really honestly that um, we matched up very well against them. You know, they, they had to do more to stop us than we had to do to stop them. And so I, I felt I had a lot of confidence in that. And, and, and not only that, but the way we could have done so many different things. You know, the, the year uh, before when we were out in Pasadena, it was, um, you know, a comp so much of a combination of, of what we did well, throwing the ball, running the ball, uh, kicking game, that whole deal. And, and then we have to turn around and you know, they weren't going to let us throw the ball deep down on them. And so Emmett got the uh, opportunity to carry the ball quite a bit. <laughs> which meant, which meant, uh, you know, which, which was kind of like it was kind of like every other week. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah, today, yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot changed. Did you make it to the mall? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what'd you buy? You go? Who, who asked that? Corby. That's Corby, of course. Um, 
No, I did not make, to my knowledge, I did not make the ball. I, I, I never followed up with the guy and said, well, did we go? You know, so. Uh, that would have been a really funny visual of Troy, like, prancing around the mall in Forever 21. <laughs> ran up 300 bucks at Claire's or Justice. I, you know, but I will say that it, it didn't quite, you know, I thought he was pulling my leg because it's a guy that I was friendly with, but I would never have. I would never have asked him to, hey, you know, let's go have a sandwich, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and so when he said, hey, let's go to the mall, but it, it kind of sounded familiar because I hadn't been to the mall in a long time. <laughs> and I try to pick my spots when I do go to the mall, so I said, you know, hey, it, it, it must have happened. I don't know. But that, yeah, that was, yeah, that's my, that's my week in Atlanta. <laughs> so if you played today... And this is a... It's a clown. It's the clown. Oh, yeah. You lost a bet. <laughs> I hope. I, I did. Hope. Yeah. I hope no, you, he's always like this. Hope yeah. Now, George thought he'd look ridiculous today, but look yeah, at his George outfits. is wearing Angus Young. I think outfit. George looks perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> you George ought to go with that every day. You know what? The strange thing about that is I noticed you. But I, I didn't even notice what George had on. <laughs> it just fit right in. Yeah. Uh, there's George, that dork, okay? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's his LeBron suit. That's a good look. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I lost a bet, too. When, when, when's the Mohawk coming about? Well, if Jason Garrett right. is this team's coach next year. Then... Oh, so you're still holding out? <laughs> so you have until what? That... Opening day? Mike yeah. Florio keeps saying that Sean Payton's coming. You know anything about that? About the Sean Payton rumor? Uh, I no, I don't yeah. know anything about it, and I'd be shocked if if. Uh, yeah, I'd, it sounds I'd, crazy, doesn't it? I, I'd say I'll get a mohawk if Jace is not the head coach. Whoa! 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 Yeah! Whoa! 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 Might, Whoa! might want to walk that back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, should have checked with my wife first. <laughs> well, I'd like to see the first game of the year when that happens when Joe calls Troy in and he slides in with right. a mohawk. Hey, everybody. He's bring in the Hall of Famer Troy Aikman, who <laughs> you'll notice is wearing a mohawk. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. How can we get this done? <laughs> what happened? What are you, so, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this was an early season uh, Cowboys won't make the playoffs bet. Oh, so uh, I bet you didn't think the Cowboys would make the playoffs this year either. Well, not at three and five. You saw my yeah. comments. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> my question to you was, uh, how many games, like if you played today, and maybe for you too, Jay, but uh, how many games would you have been held out of if you played in this concussion protocol oh, era? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, if, the, if the concussions were reported, and now I think they're better. When it first started, uh, I think players then just didn't say, and I think probably doctors didn't say, the concussion word was not used. And so I think guys were still getting around at circumventing it. I, think, I do think that the league's gotten better with the, the third party, the neutral doctor who's evaluating these guys. you got someone in the booth. And, but it's a, I, I don't know, to be quite honest with you, but I will say that what a lot of these guys experience, I never experienced. They talk about sensitivity to light. Uh, you know, nauseousness. Uh, I had some headaches following, but generally the day after a game, I, I felt pretty normal, you know, so. Um, Except for this whole bus incident, or the uh, mall incident. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, and, but they didn't do the baseline testing until my last year. My last year is, is when they did my baseline test, which obviously was no, no benefit to me. And, and now they, when they, test these guys they go back and compare it to their baseline test and that's how they determine whether or not they're capable of going back and playing um I, hey i said it at the time that uh when i retired everyone was talking about me and steve young as far as concussions go and i said i gotta be honest i mean if i had i, I think i had seven or eight you know two were significant the one that we just talked about uh, another one the other ones as far as head injuries go were pretty minor but I always maintain that you cannot tell me that, that when you look at the history of this game, that me and Steve Young have had significantly more concussions than all these other players that have played. It's ridiculous to even think. I mean, I'm getting hit just a few times a game. Daryl Johnson's using his helmet on every single play. Yeah. Offensive lineman, and they found that really to be true. So uh, even though I think people still point to me with the head injuries, and I will say I, I don't suffer as – 
as best I can tell from anything with regards to those injuries. But guys, uh, I know a lot of guys who, who are having some real problems. And, uh, and they're guys that had the repetitive hits, mostly offensive linemen, the, the fullbacks, and those type positions. What about How'd you, you come Jay? out of this game, Jay? Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, big, the only time I ever went to the wrong huddle was in the stupid Pro Bowl. <laughs> you really what? did that? Yeah. That uniform that, confusion, or was that... No, that was... That, that didn't have anything to – it didn't help, yeah. you know, because everyone had, you know, different helmets on, but same uniform type thing. But, yeah, Steve Atwater hit me. Oh, so you you were yeah, a little dizzy. I was. Here's the deal. All defensive players cheat. <laughs> <laughs> They're not supposed to blitz in the Pro Bowl, right? So they, they, so they do this blitz, little simple out route, and I'm thinking <laughs> – you know, I, pretty much all defensive players aren't real smart anyway. And <laughs> the linebacker is not there. To, you know, he's supposed to cover. He's not even close to me. I mean, I have no idea where he is. So I just turn around with a big smile on my face, catch the ball and turn around. And, well, they blitzed and Atwater's coming at me and hits me right here. And uh, I think the good thing about it, he was a gentleman. He did help me to the right huddle. <laughs> That's That's nice nice of him. Yeah. Very nice. You know, we're going back to this week, 25 years ago. Um, we were on the air and we, we heard these comments from Jimmy Johnson that he was asked about and then answered these really long, detailed answers about how he could turn Jacksonville around. And then three months later, yeah. he and Jerry split. Yeah. Did you guys have any indication that week or during that season that there was a major problem between your owner and your head coach? Uh, yeah, I, I think that I certainly did. And I, and I think that as a quarterback, you get, you get privy to a little bit more information than maybe some of the other players. And I don't know what, what Jay knew. I think so. there were some other guys that, that sensed there was some tension between the two of them. Uh, it, it started really in, in 92. I remember we had lost to Washington. And, and that obviously has been well documented. Jimmy on the plane going back and and then we went and we played at Atlanta on a Monday night game. So this is the year before you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and we destroyed Atlanta to win the division. First time we'd won the division. And we came in, and, and Jimmy was, was such a father figure to so many of us, and, and we all took our cues from him. And we were waiting. We just knew, that okay, this is the moment. We just, we just made Jimmy proud. We made our father proud. You know, he's going to tell us how proud he is of us. And we went in, and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say much of anything. It was just like a, another win, and I, I remember thinking, man, uh, you know, that was a real disappointment. It was a disappointment for me. I, it, I think it was for most everyone on the team. And then we traveled back to Dallas. The last game of the season was against the Chicago Bears. It was Mike Singletary's last game that he played as a Bear and then in the NFL, and we beat the Bears. So now we come in, and we said, all right, we just set a, a record for Cowboys' most wins in a season, 13. Now this is going to be the moment. Jimmy jumps up on the, this box, and he's getting ready to give this big speech, and he starts in. Well, one thing Jimmy hated was when he started to give his talk, and if he wanted everyone in the locker room immediately after the game. And if the door opened when he was starting his talk, it, I mean, it, it, he would go ballistic. I mean, he just he'd lose open, his mind. Yeah. So he's given this, he's about to say, hey, guys, I mean, that was a great performance. This, and the door opens, and he stops and turns, and it's Jerry – Walking in with Prince Bandar. Oh. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. Prince Bandar for crying out loud. And wow. Jimmy Jimmy stopped. You can just see everything just came out of his face. He just said he just stopped and said, We'll see you on Monday. And oh, he got man. down. We're like, oh my God. So that was kind of him. So you kind of knew that there was some some tension going on. And then throughout the ninety three season, Jimmy had softened a little bit compared to where he had been. And our relationship really improved great. Mine and his relationship improved greatly during that 93 season. So I was, I was hearing, hearing some things. But So the season ends. We win the Super Bowl. And I went off. I took some buddies to the Bahamas. Jimmy set me up at the Crystal Palace there in the Bahamas, his big spot where he'd go gambling. And I won some money. And back then, you know, you didn't have email and all that. So I needed my workout. So I call the Cowboys facility, and I call the, the strength coach, Mike Wojcik. I leave a voicemail, and I said, hey, 
when when you get in in the morning, can you fax me uh, the workout? I said, I need to get it in while I'm down here in the Bahamas. I forgot to bring one with me. And I said, by the way, if you run into Jimmy, tell him I'm, ki- I'm killing him here in, in the Bahamas. <laughs> so I get up the next morning. I'm going on a, a fishing trip. The GM of the casino says, hey, when you get back, Jimmy's going to meet you in the casino. I said, Jimmy who? He says, Jimmy Johnson. I said, Jimmy Johnson's coming here? And he says, yeah, he said he heard you were killing and he's going to meet you. In, uh, he wants to meet you in the high rollers. Section. All right. So I, I, I got back from the fishing trip and they said, Jimmy's over there. He and Rhonda, his, his uh, now wife, it was his girlfriend at the time. I walk in and I said, what are you doing? And he said, hey, I said, I got a message. So I thought, what the hell? He says, I'll come out because he says, I got to go on to the owner's meetings from here. So I gambled with him that night. He crushed it. I mean, he, you, his gambling is well documented. Yeah. He, he crushed it that night. He made a lot of money. And uh, he was in a great mood. He's talking about moves. We just lost John Giesick. He says, we're okay. We're going to pick up this guy. We'll be fine. So that was the last time I saw Jimmy as our head coach. Right before the non-toast. Two days whatever. later. Yeah. Two days later is when the toast or, you know, the one well-received took place. And, and, uh, and then he was out. So... It was pretty bizarre that that Super Bowl, uh, who would have thought? I mean, I tried talking Jimmy into staying for one more year, give it one more shot. For I knew he was not in for the long haul, but I just thought that maybe one more year and we could make another run at it. And I think that Jimmy had every intention of staying one more year, but I think when Jerry made those comments, hey, any one of 500 coaches could have won the Super Bowl, I think Jimmy's a smart guy, and he saw it as, as the crack in the door that gave him an out and being able to keep the money he made and be able to make a little more money along with it and get out. And he was smart in how he handled it. And uh, so that's why I've never totally faulted Jerry. Jimmy wanted, Jimmy was ready too. it was just the time that that had to happen. And it's unfortunate. Prior to all this, was this something that was a big point of a big talking point in the room amongst you guys? No, um, not, not really. I'll be honest that I had a relationship with Jerry I had more of a relationship after Jimmy left. I mean, I would see Jerry in the hall, and I'd stop and visit with him, or he'd ask for me to come talk to him, but, but, but very little. And by and large, players just didn't have much of a relation. Jerry wasn't with the team. I mean, that was – Jerry was not allowed, and you're, you're going to find this really crazy, but Jerry was not allowed on the practice field when we were practicing. So – Jimmy would be out there and these whatever the agreements were that they had when Jimmy took over but when 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 they were getting along in the early days Jerry would walk out he'd stand on the sidelines and Jimmy would go over right away and they'd converse about whatever it was that Jerry wanted to talk to him about when the tension started 92 all of 93 Jerry would come out stand on the sidelines and wait and Jimmy would freeze him out Jimmy would wait 30 minutes before he'd go over and talk to him and and I remember the first practice, the first uh, OTA that we had when, when Barry Switzer was the head coach. I walked out onto the practice field. I don't know if you remember this, Jay. I walked out onto the practice field, and, and Jerry was not only on the practice field, which we had never seen before, <laughs> but he was in coaching gear. <laughs> and I said... It's different. It's different from here on out. You know, and it was. Did you guys mind? Like, did, I mean, did it bother you that Jerry was out there at all? You know, for me, it didn't bother a bit. You know, we had such a, and Jimmy did this, and we had such a great work ethic that it it, it really didn't matter who was going to be out there. And our practices, um, I felt just just kept right on going. You know, we had we still had all the assistant coaches that we had before, and and you know. Uh, an example of how our practices went, when we would get another backup quarterback to come in, um, we would do things so quick and so fast. We were just doing simple individual routes and everything that when that quarterback, when it was his turn, he was like three seconds behind everything. We were already running and going, and they had to come in and adjust to what we were doing. And, you know, that, that was one of the things that I think made us such a great team is, is that we knew what we were going to do, and we're going to keep doing it well. All right, this is a good place to take a break. We've got a ticket ticker coming up. We've got much more with Troy and Jay. Coming up next, they'll tell us if Jerry Jr. is really rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> it is 6.57 here from Texas Motor Speedway Ticket Stock. And... 
Ticket Stock 25. Thank you very much. And we have our roundtables going on with our Cowboy legends, Jay Novacek and Troy Aikman. Yeah. And uh, we carry on with a conversation with all the ticket guys up here presently. And I get a kick out of uh, the Cowboys history from that time because I wasn't here. So I get most of it secondhand. And everyone, of course, was watching you guys during the dynasty time. And uh, then, unfortunately, Jay, your the back got the better of you. It looked like, uh, you know, I guess your last game was Super Bowl Thirty. It was, yes. And and you tried to come back, but the back wasn't cooperating, right? right. Yeah. He was like Elway in those. He went out on top, you know. That's a great yeah. call. Yeah. That's a great decision. <laughs> with, with with you, Mister Aikman, though, there's two different departments of your career. There's the one where there was nothing but great times, and then there's the one, <laughs> then there's yeah. the one where the book exists. And I, I'm quite confident you'll never write the book, but it felt like uh, even from your football life that uh, that right around the time Jay left was a completely different half of a book that was probably way more frustrating than anything you could have imagined. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Period. You get so you know, mad. The uh, Way to go, Bob. Well, you yeah. know, yeah. Nice going. Way to go, Bob. <laughs> I'm five minute I'm question answered here. in one word. <laughs> it was way below five minutes. <laughs> Bob's on the payroll, so he's, he's real comfortable with being able to ask. <laughs> Tell us about what time sucked, Troy. Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, I mean, hey, we, when I, you know, I, I got to Dallas, they were the worst team in the league. And then my after my first year, we were still, you know, the worst team in the league. And, and so... Uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't join a team that had, that was ten and six, twelve and four, and 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 so there were some growing pains that came with that. And we started to turn it around. You know, then when we brought in Jay after my first year, and and you know Arizona puts him on the Plan B list, and and we, and we gobble him up, and and then we're able to 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 slowly you know build our team. A lot of it obviously had to do with the trade of, of Herschel. Not so much oh, yeah. the picks, but what we did with the picks, you know, and right. and so to be the worst team in football in '89, and then you know three years from that to be on top of the mountain was was uh, was a great accomplishment, and and I felt that we would win a Super Bowl. I, I didn't I didn't know that it would happen when it did as quickly, and then to hold it together. But like Jay said, when Jimmy left. Uh, first of all, I mean, I, I could talk about Jimmy for a while as far as what he meant to us as a coach, uh, but he, he had every bit to do with the building of that roster. You know, I mean, he made those picks. I don't know, you know, who's saying what or wh what you're reading, but Jimmy made those picks, okay? And he built that team. So when when he left, like Jay said, you know, we, we were not on autopilot, but we continued to roll because of the things that Jimmy had implemented, you know, within our football team. But that slowly was beginning to erode. I mean, we'd lose players. We didn't replace them through the draft. We just replaced them because they were backups, but they were already on the roster, you know, because of the guys that Jimmy had brought in. So we went through a stretch where we, we were not paying as much attention to detail as we once were, and we weren't bringing in the players uh, that we once were. So it was a steady decline. And, and then, you know, we went, so in 95, we, or in 96, we, well, let me, in 93, some would say that was the best team we had. Right. And, and, and maybe it was, I don't know where I'm at on that. The 92 team was awfully good, but those two years were really good. 94, we weren't as good as we were in 93, 95, when we won the Super Bowl, we weren't as good as we were in 94, 96, we weren't as good as we were in 95. You see where I'm going here. So every year we were we were we were we were getting a little worse. It bottomed out in '97. We were six and ten, and then a, and then a change was made. But we still weren't, you know. So for me, it's a great time to talk about it because if you look at the Patriots and Brady and Bill Belichick, well, I've always posed the question: Does Belichick benefit more from Tom Brady, or does Tom Brady benefit more from Bill Belichick? And 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 I've got thoughts. I think they both benefit a lot from each other. But basically what Brady's benefiting from is what I was benefiting from and would have continued to benefit benefit from had Jimmy have not wanted to go fishing in the Florida Keys. You know, if he just wanted to be a lifer, you know, as a coach and assuming that, that, that Jerry was going to be okay with it. I will also say that 
Bob Kraft, he's had his moments where he's dealt with some tough moments with Bill Belichick. But he has told me that he looks back on what happened with us, and he said, why would I want to mess up a good thing? You know, he learned from that. Yeah. And I really believe that if Jerry were to hit this right now, I think somehow, some way, they would, you know, they'd move, you know, mountains to make sure that, hey, you just don't have this happen very often. The North Turners and those guys, they say they've coached a long time in this league. They've never come into a situation that was as good as what we had during that run. So the frustration for me, as good as it was during that stretch, the five, six years, it was every bit as bad on the back end. So my season, my year, my career started off bad. It went great, and then it ended bad. And it was all self-inflicted. It wasn't just because... Even though it seems like they're getting hurt more than when we played, but it's easier for them to continue being very good at, and playing at a high level. He, he has uh, a very unique um, opportunity with Belichick to to make those adjustments every year when they get new players in. That's what's amazing about that team is it doesn't matter who's coming in to play for them. They're going to be very good, and I think it, it has to do with those two guys. 40 is going to be the norm for quarterbacks, and, uh, and and it will slowly, I think, creep up a little bit more for wide receivers You know, because they're not getting hit quite the same way. But for quarterbacks, I saw a game. <clears throat> I was watching film getting ready for a game, and, and Kirk Cousins uh, had the ball. He was kind of rolling out to his left and there was a free rusher no one was on him and he 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 didn't do anything was not bothered by it you know didn't try to make a move didn't throw real quick and he he just knew he wasn't gonna get hit and uh and so that certainly has helped the other part that's helped for guys like brady breeze um and whoever else but these guys are they, they come into the league now immediately taking good care of themselves i mean they they've got they're making so much money they've they've got a whole staff i mean they're they're ceos of this brand of theirs and they have trainers they have cooks they have you know guys who travel with them brady has guys who travel with them and stretch them and and all that so they're way ahead of the curve uh in in wellness and fitness and nutrition that's given them a chance to to play longer as well back to you jimmy leaving because fans have thought this for sure. I want to know what you think. If it was a... If you can't take it seriously. Know. I'm having a hard time. With it. <laughs> <laughs> here. All he, week. If he stayed for 15 years. <laughs> if he stayed for 10 years. what You've thought about it. Well, I'm asked a lot. I am asked how many more Super Bowls would you have won if he had stayed. And, and uh, you know, I, I who knows? I mean, who really knows? What, what I believe is... Maybe we would have. Maybe we wouldn't have won anymore. I mean, I, I believe that we would have, but maybe we wouldn't have. But the difference would have been that that we would have been. I, I, I don't want to hold us to the Patriots because what they've done is remarkable. But we would have been like the Patriots to where we would have been knocking at the door each year. I mean, we'd be in the playoffs. We'd we'd would be going to championship games. We'd have we we would have been more competitive for a much longer period of time. And and I think Jimmy's comment. I know when, I know when Jerry said, "Hey, any one of 500 coaches could have won a Super Bowl." And you know, the, the, so another coach besides Jimmy could have won a Super Bowl. I mean, I could, you know, Barry won a Super Bowl for us two years later. But what Jimmy says his accomplishment was, and I think this is him, you know, being being very honest. His accomplishment wasn't coaching those Super Bowls. His his most proud thing of all that was that he assembled those teams that won the Super Bowl, and I think that was, I think that was his greatest strength. He was a tremendous personnel guy. Did the uh, egos in the room get large in any way that you thought it would have affected it? I mean, when Jimmy left, did it just kind of go wild in the locker room? Because on the outside looking in, it looked like it was just every man for himself. Eagles? Eagles. Eagles. Not the Eagles, no. Uh, <laughs> we know they wanted a lot. They had Rich Coach on Eagles. Yeah, yeah, Eagles. We had Michael Irvin on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what bigger ego do you want? <laughs> but did that spread? I mean, everyone else kind of doing their own thing. Did Jimmy have that under control? Did it kind of go crazy when he left? Nah, I think they're all pretty crazy when he was there, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I, what... what what changed was, 
you know, Jimmy was pretty strict on on who was allowed into the facility, who who had access to players. Uh, you know, Jimmy left, and 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 we had we had tailors and suit salesmen that were in there fitting guys. You know, I mean, we had barbers in there doing haircuts, and you know, it was yeah, it got it got it got a lot looser. That's that's pretty safe to yeah. say. Yeah, that, that that was the impression of that second chapter I talked about. Was it, it, it felt at times listening to you talk that. <clears throat> you kind of felt like you had to play quarterback and kind of be the adult in the room a lot of times for the organization. And, and, and in some yeah, ways... I thought we were going to come out here and have a good time. Way to go, Bob. Way to go, Bob. Here, are we? Yeah, I'm I sorry. Did my, I did my, uh, my, my football life or whatever, and I sat down, and they wanted to get into all these, all these questions, and, you know, very similar. And, um, and, and, and that is why I'm here. I understand that. But I... <laughs> But I came out of that interview and I just said, you know, that, that was it was really uh, it was really a dark period for me in my life, you know, and athletic or professionally to where it was not a it was not a good time. I uh, I, I walked into the facility on many days saying today's going to be better, today's going to be better, and then then something would happen and I'd be right back where I was the day before, and and so um, I, you know I I've kind of gotten through that. I, I I've I've let it go for the most part. I'm sorry, I should no, let that's it go fine. Too. It's fine. Way to go, Bob. Way to go, Bob. But it was, uh, it was it was it was it was not it was it was it was a it was an organization without any direction for for quite some time. And and then I think that it took uh, well I don't think I know it took Bill Parcells coming in and and for those that think well Bill didn't do much. I mean they they didn't even win a playoff game. Team was five and eleven for three years in a row prior to Bill Parcells. His first year, he takes them to the playoffs, and uh, and they've been competitive ever since Bill walked out the door. And 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 I credit him for uh, for making the Cowboys relevant again. Let me lighten the mood. <clears throat> Let me lighten the mood. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> to the clown. That's what clowns do. I'm gonna take my clothes off. This is for both of you guys, um, because we're fascinated by your. Your musical career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that really Jay, nicely Jay, Jay, Jay was on that. Jay was, well, on. Know, was that Jay's? You want to go back to the team? Yeah, you want to go back to the Let's go back to the dark Chan, days. Chan Gailey or something? Or, uh, or do you want to talk about driving down 66? <laughs> you pick... I think my problem is they didn't they didn't pick the right song for me. Is I think. The, I think now who's right. how did that transpire? How did that start? I think Jerry brought in Prince Bandar. He wanted to do an album with the guys. Stolen <laughs> money. There, there was a guy. You guys might you guys might have been familiar with him since you you know I know there's musicians here on the stage. Um, his name was Doc Swicegood. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. And uh, and and. You know, uh -oh. God rest his soul. It's a tragic ending to his life, but um, oh, it, well, <laughs> now I'll be down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez, I, I, I but, fun here. But Joe Abizano, Joe, Joe Abizano loved. Joe got you going on that, right? Well, he, 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 you know, Joe wanted. You know, Joe was a worse singer than I. Am, you know, I mean, <laughs> what are you but, talking but about? He, would, you know, he loved he, music, though. He, he loved, loved music, yeah, and he was yeah. great. He was, he was, he was great. We had more fun with Joe, and yeah. and and he would go and record with Swicegood. He just loved doing it, and and you know, just something he. Really really had a passion about and then somehow i think it was swice good that said hey why don't we do this album and and asked us and jay and me and and uh, randy, randy, randy white and, and walt, garrison. walt garrison and some others and and we said okay and we're you know, stupid yeah we're, <laughs> <laughs> where they fooled me or swice good did and, yeah he and, said we were good that's right he wasn't even he wasn't even a you know he wasn't even a good salesman and he says <laughs> i mean i do it he goes man i said this is terrible and he goes no no he says trust me he says you got some real talent i mean you got some talent <laughs> and i i kind of bought into it and he wrote the song this the, the driving down 66 he wrote that song for me and you know you can tell they whatever they could mix the hell out of that song, try to make it sound halfway decent, but it's good. You know, it's good. you know, I'm not I, I'm not embarrassed by it. It was you know it was something we did. It was it was fun. I said, what the hell? You know, it, it, I, I was a professional quarterback, and and I wish I could sing better. I wish I could do like like Gordon and, and George and and get up and sing and. Mike, Tom, waste this tomorrow. You can perform it. Well, yeah. I, 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 I like you know my my stepson is a singer, and he he takes lessons three nights a week and can play the guitar and he's singing. He's, he's you know he's doing some really great things, doing shows. 
Wow. And, uh, you know, whether or not he ultimately can ever make a living doing it, I, I don't know. But if I could do what he can do to where he can just get up and sing and just have fun as a hobby and, a, you know, like, like you guys do for the most part, I, I, I'd love that. I would absolutely love that. But it's just it's not not in the cards for me. I later did one with Waylon Jennings and and it, it was a little better, not a whole lot better. But it, I'm thrilled that I got to actually sit and do a recording with Waylon Jennings. And then I got to do one with Toby Keith. And so those are just kind of moments that Jay and I and others get a chance, you know, because of uh, our connection with the Cowboys and where we were at that point in our lives where you say, hey, why not? Just have some fun with it and do it. You'll, no one's asking me now to yeah. do it. I'm just saying, Tom wastes you know, his bar. If I hadn't done it then, I never would have gotten to that, do it. Did, did your country you, did that, you did that with Toby and, and Waylon, huh? I did one with Toby and then did one with Waylon. You're not as smart as I thought. <laughs> did your, uh, you had a uh, country music star girlfriend for a while. Did she ever listen to it and give you a little? No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, Why are you booing? Oh, oh, oh. Why would that be booed? Oh, because you're such a clown. This, you're a clown. This, side Why is that round, being this side of the round table is tough. Oh, right. I thought we were doing really well. <laughs> Then Dan blew it. Uh, Why would that be booed? How are you going to do well with a Packers fan and a clown? How are you going to do well with that? <laughs> All right. Can we talk post football next? In the uh, few minutes yeah. we have left? Okay, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We'll do that next with Troy Aikman and Jay Novacek. <laughs> Ticket stock. Yeah. All right. It is 720 here on Sports Radio 1310. The Ticket live from Texas Motor Speedway. Ticket stock 25. And this is our final portion of the roundtable. <laughs> Troy Aikman, Jay Novacek joining us up here. And we're listening to... Uh, hey, yes. Troy Aikman. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Woo! You know the words? Nothing wrong with this, man. It's not a bad chorus. No, nothing, wrong nothing wrong with, wrong with this. this. A good singer could make that thing. Oh, yeah. It's good. Funny. Why don't somebody cut it tomorrow night? <laughs> we thought about the it. The time waste. Well, we thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys, first off, you clearly, Jay, are still active in the horse industry, right? You're like riding and active doing all the horse industry. I, 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 do. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the horse the industry. Horse industry. <laughs> he, you ride, right? I, I do ride horses. How horses. do you still do that with like a really bad back and all that? Did it eventually get better? Did you have surgery or something? Yeah, it like that? could be worse, could be better. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't bother you? Could be worse, could be better. Way okay. to go, Corby. <laughs> move on, Corby. What? That means move He's on. He's trying to say <laughs> cutting horses. What kind of what kind of horses you work with? I, I ride cutting horses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My Jay- wife rides, uh, does all the English and the Western Pleasure and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Jay, on on your ranch, right. how many other living things besides you and Amy are there now? Oh, a couple thousand. Mm. Cattle. We have some cattle. We have uh, we raise labradoodles, so we got a bunch of them pups on the ground. Eighteen of them, as, actually, and we got obviously the horses. And we got other dogs, and, and we got a pig. Oh, oh. a pig! And, so and, you have and, a pig, and there's another exotic animal <laughs> there. And we got a camel. My pig. <laughs> you you got a camel? camel. A camel. So here, you know, I. I build my nice cutting pen, all right? It's nice outdoor, and you put nice sand in it and everything. And we go to a horse show, I think, up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and went right through Henrietta, Oklahoma, going up there. There you go. Route 66. (laughs) 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 Brought back some memories of a song or something. (laughs) And... (laughs) Things <laughs> are good back there. Well, you don't know and my they wife, are. she snookers me, okay? She gets this camel when we're gone, and we don't have a place to put it, so she's thinking, okay, sand, camel, <laughs> desert, yeah. desert type, and so she puts it in my cutting pen. With the nice sand, I haven't even ridden in it yet. I just finally got it built, just just like I want it. And I can't use the thing for a month because there's a camel in it. <laughs> and, and the things that a camel leaves in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the leavings of a large camel. Yeah, just um, a camel leaves camel it's leavings. It's a little bit bigger than a rabbit, if you know what I mean. Hey, what's, what's the point of getting a camel? Does it like... Uh, Keep mountain lions away or something like what? What purpose milk. is there in a nut? You milk a camel? <laughs> you can nothing. pretty much milk anything. Gordon. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. 
<laughs> did she just get a good deal on the camel, or did Prince Bandar come oh, by yeah. and drop off yeah. the camel? Or? Yeah, like a helicopter. <laughs> just going. The Prince yep. Bandar, yeah. You know when they say you get something for free, it's really not free. Uh huh. Yeah, it's our camel. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to your pig here for a second. Okay. Do you consider your pig smart? <laughs> Pigs are really smart, yes. They are, Mike. Yeah, they are. Way to go, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Mike yeah, fires some wins by pigs. He gets excited I'm when people talk about pigs. pigs. Follow-ups to that, Mike? No, no follow-ups. <laughs> no, <not> really. <laughs> are you interested in getting a smart pig? Um, no, I prefer to... St <laughs> well, I'm going to say... Oh, oh, come on, right. Mike. No, no, no. No. All right, Troy, so no, it, must, it must be pretty smart because it lives at our house and gets everything it wants to do, yeah. so... Mm. You uh, uh, now you know my kids. They know you as Troy, the the broadcaster. They don't know you as Troy, the football player. You talking and, to Jay? Uh, it's still Troy. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Got you. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you look back. You know, it's, it's you've been doing it long enough to where it's 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 your obvious gig, and you're very good at it and everything. But at the time when you were a player, nobody ever expected you to do that, especially. Like the last five years that Bob is so fond of talking about. <laughs> yeah. Where you were kind of a curmudgeon. You know, you're always mad and stomping around and you were short with the media and everything. And so at what point did you make that? What was the, the matriculating point of, of you moving I, into that? Yeah, I, uh, I I never had any interest in, in going into broadcast. And never, it never entered my mind. I didn't think it, was, it would be anything that I would enjoy. And then uh, they had the... Uh, uh, the European League, the U.S. Uh, the US NFL Europe. NFL Europe. Europe. Yeah. So uh, I had been asked several times to go over and do some games by Fox, and I just didn't have any interest, so I turned them down. And then uh, Dell Hellestre had gone over a few times. He really enjoyed it. We were on a flight coming back from a game around 98, and I always sat next to Dale going on these trips, and Brad Champ came up, and... And they were talking about NFL Europe and, and going over and doing games. I said, Brad, why don't you go over and do some games? He goes, well, I'd like to. But, uh, you know, because he was talking about television and things. And But he says, I, I haven't been able to get them to, to, to bring me over. And I said, heck, they've been asking me for a few years to go over. I said, how about if I go and I'll tell them that I'll go, but only if you're my play-by-play -play guy. And he said, man, that'd be awesome. So I contacted Fox, said, you guys have been asking me for the last several years, and, and, and I'd like to go. I wasn't going because I wanted to go over and broadcast. I was going because I just thought, you know, they're going to put me up for two weeks. I'm going to enjoy Europe, and, and I'll do a couple games, you know, and this will be great. Brad will get to do the games he wants to do. And But then I got over there, and so we went to the practices, and I, and I started asking Brad, okay, not that a lot of people were watching the games, but I wanted to be prepared and not embarrass myself. So I said, what do I need to know? And he started telling me, and... And so he and I, and the comfort for me was the reason I didn't think I would like, I just didn't know how you could talk for three hours, you know, without getting, without it. getting yeah. feedback, right? Try four and a half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so special kind of hell. So I, so I, I just kind of saying, Hey, Hey, how am I going to do this? And then when I, but I knew that if I didn't say anything, I knew Brad could carry the entire broadcast because he was a pro, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I didn't have, I didn't feel any pressure to have to talk if I didn't feel like talking. But then when you start preparing for a game and you start working at it, then you realize, man, I got a lot of things that I want to say. And it was, it was so conversational with Brad. I, I loved it. It really enjoyed it. And then uh, when that game ended, I got a call from Ed Gorin, who was uh, the head of Fox at the time, and he said, hey, when you retire. He says, we've got a job for you. And now he didn't say it, it, on what team. But then two years later, when uh, when I was trying to con would decide what I wanted to do, Mellon was leaving and going to the to the Lions to be the general manager. It's a good move on his part. Well, it, I mean, it didn't go great, obviously, but he made a, he made a whole lot of money. And not that the, not that money is everything, but. But I, you know, I don't think he regretted the decision. And for me, they said if you if you retire, we're going to move you into the number two booth. And I worked with Daryl Johnson that year, and and I really, quite honestly, I thought I would do, I thought I'd do two or three years, and then I'd be on to something else. But uh, the jo it's a great job. The, the job's great. The pay's good. The the amount of time I have, especially as a single father at the time. Was uh, was really good. So thank you. What was the other? I mean, you were saying you were trying to decide what you were going to do after. What was there a plan B? Well, I didn't have a I didn't have a plan. I was never really worried about it towards the end of my career. I, I knew something would present itself, and I had I had uh, mentors in business that I knew that you know I could go to work for them and and uh, go that route. 
But this this uh, provided an opportunity. I, I took it and I've enjoyed it. And and I still I've said it many times. I've said it on the show with these guys. I still believe that I still believe there's another frontier for me. I don't know what that is, but uh, I, Music, I don't. Maybe I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the I don't think my last uh, uh, foray into something is going to be broadcast. Do you think football is going to you'll stick with something related to sports? Yeah, I don't or football know. Or? I, I, I would probably say more than likely, but uh, but you know I don't know. I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't closed doors on anything really. Head coach of the Cowboys this is inside or, or? <laughs> <laughs> no? I would the coach in part. I, I think that when I first retired that. If, if my kids weren't so – if I didn't have kids or if they were older, I might have I might have immediately gone into either coaching or pursued a front office role. Um, but my girls were just born uh, the year I retired. My, my girls weren't born my last year. They were born my first year out of retirement. And, uh, and I just felt that it was a really selfish move to go into coaching. The, the coaches, they, they don't see their families at all during the football season. And, and I just, I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be home for them. And, and so that was never an op- that was never an option for me. Is the end of broadcasting inside for you or is it open-ended or? Um, <clears throat> no, it's not. Um, I've got four years left on this contract. I just signed a new contract last year and, and, uh, and I want to do that. And I really, what I'd like to do is get my kids through college uh, my youngest is a freshman, and and then once that happens, then I'll decide: do I want to continue to do it or not do it? I, I think the I think I'll enjoy broadcasting even more when the kids are out of the house because I won't be rushing back to Dallas. You know, I'll be able to stay out and travel to some cities, go from one city to the next city, and not necessarily have to come back to Dallas all the time as quickly as possible. And so I, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. I think I'll, I, I, what I'd like is probably, uh, you know, eight, ten more years, and and then I'll be in my early 60s, and and I think that would probably be about it. I, I just don't want to be, I don't want to be a whole lot older than that in the public and, and on television. And I think that when I do retire from that, I, I, I'm not sure I'll be seen from or heard from again. I, I don't. I don't, you know, I don't know that I'm going to be attending events or commenting on. I think I just really want to kind of get away and, and go do my thing, whatever that is, and and just uh, be as far away from people as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> <Great Brilliant. laughs> when when you were a player, what did you think of the ticket? Uh, I, I didn't like it. I I, I, could, I, I would, didn't like. I'll it. stop you right now because I, I as uh, I was whatever 24 years old, and they would send me out there to. Um, uh, to get tape and all that, and I would walk around, and of course we had to have those stupid giant mic flags at all times, which I eventually took off. But I remember walking up to you one time, and this is after Skip being the biggest jack wagon there is, and the <laughs> stupid ass comments that he made. Sorry about him. But yeah. and so I remember walking up to you one time. I'm like, hey man, you know, blah 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 blah. And you looked at me, and you looked down at the mic flag, and you're like, get out of here. And I was like, yeah, it's freaking Skip Bayless. He yeah. sucks. <laughs> and this guy. He's still sucking, and he's, you know, making eight million a year doing nothing. Sucking, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. sucking, sucking it in. <laughs> and that really is. I mean, that uh, and that was, you know, the station started, but you know, before he then wrote his book and all yeah. that. But uh, he was, he was an adversary from the time I walked through the doors in in '89, and I and it had very little to do with me. I don't think it had anything to do with me, quite honestly. I think it had more to do with. Uh, the antagonistic relationship that he had with Randy Galloway and Dale Hansen. So when I came to town, Hansen and Galloway were were strong supporters from the very beginning of me. And so then he had to take on the contrarian view. And so, you know, I just thought that I, I'm fine if I don't play well and somebody writes that. You know, I just, when, when, when it goes beyond that and you're just constantly, tr- which is what he's been doing with LeBron James. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. And, uh and so I, I didn't care for him really uh, pretty early on. And, and then when he went to the station, uh, it was just one of those deals where, you know, I won't do a program right now on FS1. Uh, he works for Fox, and he's on FS1, and I've made it clear to my bosses that any show that's on FS1, I just simply won't be on. And uh, they said, they said, well, how, what do you mean? How can you do that? And I said, well, it's real easy. I'm doing it. And, uh, you know, I mean, did you, did you, so when you hired Skip, did you think that, did you think that I'm now hoping this, this network, uh, you know, succeeds and has great success? I mean, give me a break. So um, they, they, they fortunately haven't fired me over it, and uh, but I don't do shows on FS1. Good so on your you. ticket hatred 
all so, stemmed from there. So, you didn't care about uh, no. Fake, and I will say, tray. I will say, no. I, 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 I don't. I think it's all great. I mean, I really do. I, I, but, but then when I, I would occasionally tune in. And I was one of these because I think that I, I read it in The Athletic today when I was reading your story that uh, when I would tune in, I'm expecting to, to be listening to sports. And, and I'm looking. And it just seemed like every time I tuned in, it was talking about just nonsense. And, and, I, and I'm like, yeah. I, I, this, show, I'm like this stuff is awful. I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't hang in there long enough to really appreciate any of it. And I was just like, these guys are a bunch of idiots, you know. And, <laughs> and so it never changed. And then, then they approached me about, um, about doing a show. And I'd been out. You, some, you, Craig, you said 15 years or whatever it was. I knew it was shortly after I'd retired. And, uh, and I did, when I did retire, I started listening to the show. And I found myself to be, you know, I li- now it's all I listen to. When I get in the car, it's, it's on, you know. And... Easy audience. You were one of them, man. But, but now I, I really do enjoy the I enjoy the takes on on the games. I mean, I enjoy when you guys are talking about sports and, and the games. But but I find myself more you know listening to Gordo's Corner and laughing about some of that stuff and <laughs> laughing about the, so I, now. I, I've gone, I've gone full circle, and I and I really do get it. And and I never once think, gosh, why are they not covering sports, or why are they talking about this? I think it's awesome. And and uh, you know, I know that other uh, other stations around the country have tried to duplicate it. And I was telling Dan Bennett backstage, you just you you can't. I mean, you can't pull it, you know, that because you guys here are the ones who make it work, and and it's really cool. I've told I've told Joe Buck, you know, now with the app, I've told Joe and guys on our crew, I said, you, you've got to download the app. And I'm telling you, at 840, I live for 840. At 840, it's, it's, the, greatest, it's the greatest stuff ever. And, and uh, so I think it's awesome. I have told, when Drew Bledsoe came to town, I said, Drew, I really think the best thing you can do is is somehow figure out how to have a show a weekly show on on the ticket because the listener the listening base is so broad and and they really if if you ha- or if if you have a relationship with the ticket and you're able to talk about whatever it is the good times the tough games whatever it is I'm telling you it, it'll serve you well in the long haul if you're in our community and I don't think he took me up on it it didn't happen but while. but I I would tell Dak the same thing I I think uh, I think this station has so much reach. And, and, and impact so many people that I, I, I think that these players, uh, if given an opportunity, I think they sh- I think they should have a show on the on the wow. on the ticket. Boy, thank you for thank two you. years worth yeah. of promos. Yeah. <laughs> the great Troy Aikman and Jay Novacek. Woo, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. We've got uh, one more segment, I believe, here of Roundtable Fun from Texas Motor Speedway Ticket Stock 25. Great crowd here tonight. Thank you to all of the P1s who showed up today at the Plano Center. And don't forget, we've got one more big day of Texas Motor Speedway Ticket Stock 25 tomorrow. (laughs) We're going to have roundtables all day long. We're going to have more symposiums in the time tunnel and... We've got the Ticket Time Wasters tomorrow night at 6 o'clock roughly here on the main stage playing our greatest hits. It's going to be a blowout of a concert. Very excited about that. And, of course, big thanks to Troy Aikman and Jay Novacek for joining us for the last hour of fun football talk and ticket memories and such. How great was that? That was awesome. That was awesome. Really, really fun. I mean, we could have... You say this all the time, but seriously, we could have spent three, four, five more hours with those guys. It is seriously one of the biggest turnarounds ever. With with him in his playing career and how he was and how he is now, you would never expect no. him to be but this you know, open. Yeah. You know, everything. the thing about him, and as he said at the end, you know, he gets it. He's always got it. He got it what it meant to be the number one overall pick and how you should act and the responsibilities that came along with that. He knew what it was about when he won Super Bowls and how to handle that. And then, yeah, it wasn't a very good time for him when they started losing, you know, and not going to Super Bowls. But 
I don't, he, he's always no, but that's, been able to get it. You know, he's a, he's a smart dude. That confirms your point, though. I mean, the fact, and this is why when we look at quarterbacks, way up on the list is intangibles, even though they're really not quantifiable. Because if your quarterback loses what this is all about, you're so screwed. Yeah. And when they, you know, they start worrying about their brand, they start worrying about all the great things that come with the life. And I, I, I really feel, and his football life does a great job of kind of telling the story, I really feel like that magnet to, you know, the center of how this is supposed to be, I think it kind of made him crazy because he was surrounded by chaos down the stretch. And, and there wasn't a Jimmy figure to kick people out of the locker room and say, this is how it has to be. And I, th- I think that drives him crazy. And I, 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 it's a really, really interesting topic. But, of course... You know, it's probably way more fun to talk about three Lombardi trophies. We were out there for Super Bowl 30, and I don't know if you remember this, because I think it was pretty well covered on ESPN, and I don't think the NFL Network is even around then. Dion and Michael had oh. their own limos that would take them to practice. I mean, it was we have that about chaos. I mean, it was just... I don't think they know what that is. It was just crazy uh, what they had limos. to deal with there we as they're getting ready to play a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know... That, that is, there's actually great audio that uh, occasionally makes it into our open where Dion's they, they, talking about that. Show we wasn't lemos. We stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. But imagine being the guy who knows what the structure looks like, and now you see, you know, nobody's in charge here. It's kind of a miracle they got that Super Bowl 30 because that season almost fell apart. Oh, yeah. That was load left in Philadelphia. And then they had to come back from a fourth down and I don't want to say it was like a fourth down and 12 that Kevin Williams converted. Yeah, it was. To come back and beat the Giants. They don't win that game. And then all of a sudden that season really craters. And I wonder what happened. I don't if, think they get there. If Green Bay doesn't knock the 49ers out and they play the Niners again in 95, I wonder what happens. Because the Niners had uh, taken it to them, hadn't they, in, earlier that year? I believe so. Was that Gerbach? That was the year before. Okay. Maybe. maybe that was the year before. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, that season uh, almost fell apart before they resurrected it late and then made that one last run. And I, I remember when we saw, I think we saw Aikman and Dale as we were getting up the next day to do our show after Super Bowl Thirty, they were just ending their night. And I almost, I remember, I think we even talked about that morning. This is, this is probably the end. Because every year they were getting robbed of coaches and players, and it just seemed like eh, there's, there's, even though they got Dion now, this is probably the end of the dynasty. Well, that was a period back then that people forget. Jimmy leaving was a an enormous factor in this club's decline. But back then the NFL had just instituted free agency, and there were rules that counterbalanced the good team's ability to sign free agents. And over that course of a three-year period, the Cowboys lost 25 free agents of varying levels and signed seven. Uh, And away went really good, solid players, the Stepnoskis and the Ken Nortons and people like that who have been heart and soul members of that club. They they couldn't keep them. And they were were absolutely wet in the bed on a lot of those... 95 and oh. 96 draft picks, those those high end, your Shante Carvers, and Kavika your Pittman, Pittman, like and, that. and yeah. Just, yeah, David Lafleur. They weren't they weren't replenishing very well, and it was dying on the vine so much so that you know this is how it happens. I guess for just about every athlete that doesn't go out like Elway, but you remember the Randall Cunningham kind of uh, the fans kind of booing that. Aikman was going back in because they had decided Randall Cunningham could save this thing. You dang right he could have. Remember how weird that was? <laughs> oh yeah, because Bad weird Radio weird called me out for not saying that Randall Cunningham. What was it? You didn't I, came in I didn't. You didn't introduce. Was that a regular him. season game? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think my microphone could work. <laughs> uh, I think Dude, he came into the game. Yeah, and I didn't announce it. Now a quarterback, Randall Cunningham, I think, and yeah. Pat Radio killed me for it the next day. Now a quarterback, you deserve to be such real. A, such an Aikman homer. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I might have changed my tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's like, hey, Troy. 
<laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Twenty years ago, he's got a cheese head. He sucks. Get him out. No, you know what? Honestly, that, that's that's the one Packer question that I, I'm always interested in is would he have would he have gone to Green Bay because Green Bay screwed up December of '88 to screw up the first pick, and they ended up with Tony Mandrich. But Aikman, like, there's even an, a game. Uh, in my ridiculous football collection, where the open is Green Bay, if they can keep, if they can lose these last two, they get Troy Aikman. And I always got the impression he wasn't very tickled about that idea. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I get the impression that uh, I don't know if he would have power played it at all and not reported, but that that certainly changes the course of both franchises. I, I imagine the Cowboys are smart enough not to take Tony Mandrich number two. They probably would have. Maybe gone Barry Sanders or or Dion. That was Barry. So there's five top five picks of that draft in '89. Four of them end up in Canton. Wow! It's uh, Barry Sanders, Dion Sanders, Troy Aikman, and Derek Thomas. And the one you got your picture with didn't make it. So <laughs> Green Bay had the number two pick and managed to navigate around this all the Hall of Famers. <laughs> this all the Hall of Famers. It was funny. Quite a glorious draft. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. We've had Troy out the ticket stock before, but that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That was a lot of fun. Perfect timing. I can't. It is weird that Norm had the camel intel on Jay Novacek. Well, <laughs> you kept making him go through the animals till he got to the camel. He did not and, want to mention his camel. And, <laughs> and he and his wife Amy just and, love animals in there and, everywhere. <laughs> well, I knew where he was going. Thought you were about to remind him he's under oath. <laughs> <laughs> because he's trying to hide the camel. Hey, going back 25 yeah, years, yeah. I got a question for Mike. As we mentioned, we all, when we signed on the air the 24th of January, the next day we all, or that afternoon for a lot of us, we flew to Atlanta for the Cowboys Bills Super Bowl. Everybody except Mike, who was our program director and getting the station on the air. Did you hate that? That you couldn't yes, make that I trip? Hated it. Yes, I did hate it. And what was it I, like I being hated back it, here? I hated it worse because. Nothing worked the next day, and most of it had had to do with what was going on out there, and there was really not a lot I could do about it. Like you're constantly on the phone with our engineer yes, at the time. And yes, such as he was. Right. <laughs> it was kind of funny, though, that Skip Bayless was knocked off the air. He was trying to get back on the air, and our engineer was over getting Super Bowl memorabilia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, looking back, that was kind of funny now. That must have been the most yeah. chaotic week. Oh, God. Hey, guys. It, it, it was a nightmare. Who's this? this? Chaotic hey. week. <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> Embrace instant characters. Come on. I don't know. Chaotic. See, everyone likes instant characters. All right, what's the story with chaotic? What's your story, chaotic? Nothing. They don't live longer than a I second. You they just they appear. They you can't disappear. ask a follow up. They they've got nothing. Y'all talk to Troy Aikman lately? <laughs> yeah, we'll just talk to him, okay? <laughs> okay. So what? Um, what's going on, y'all? The off switch okay, on that. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, you know we can go mic off here. We used to have to do that on Gordon hey guys. every day. Hey, well, Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Mike off. <laughs> so did you do the show from the studio and Grego was out there? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was yeah. a mess. Absolutely. It was a mess. <laughs> Man, we had you missed out, too. We had so much fun that week. Oh, I'll bet. Especially Grego and Ganji's birthday party. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys had fun. Because These old gals spelled a... happy birthday with Pert, and it was really cool. It, it was, was the we worst were... week I've ever huh? had here at the ticket. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, it was. Oh, I hate to hear that, Mike. Well, you know, it got better. Yeah. <laughs> so, Culminating with tonight. How about yeah. this? Yeah. 25 years later, here we are. Yeah. All right, cancel. tomorrow we are going to the doors open at noon, or is somebody going to be here before then? None. They open at noon. Okay, so tomorrow we're here from noon to 8. 